Legendary Passages, Episode 67, The Perdidian Gate The Road from Thebes, from Pausanias' Description of Greece Last time we heard how Heracles decided his own destiny. This time we explore the impact that he and his family had on the Theban lands. First, the tomb of Semel is near the temple of her son Dionysus, although Heracles' mother Alcmena has no tomb of her own, as her body was replaced by a stone. Then comes the tombs of the daughters of Antiponus, who sacrificed their lives so that Heracles and the Thebans could defeat the Orchomenians. Heracles dedicated a stone lion for this victory. Heracles' father Amphitryon dedicated images to Athena on the spot where he put on, or girded, his armor. On the edge of the city are the tombs of Zethus and Amphion, Melanippus and Tydeus, Oedipus's children, Tiresias, the Trojan Hector, and lastly, Asphodocus. The road next goes to Timesis, best known for the legend of the Timusian fox, which Amphitryon helped defeat. Past Gleesus and the Snake's Head, and below Supreme Mount Hypastus, is the tomb of Chalcodon, slain by Amphitryon during battle with the Euboans. Finally, we come to the sanctuary of Mycalesian Demeter, where each night the doors are closed and opened again by Heracles, here called one of the Idean dactyls. Next time, stories of Heracles etched onto the shield of Eupilus. The Perdidian Gate, a legendary passage, from Pausanias' Description of Greece. Translated by W. H. S. Jones Near the Protodian Gate is built a theater, and quite close to the theater is a temple of Dionysus, surnamed Deliverer. For when some Theban prisoners in the hands of Thracians had reached Haliartia on their march, they were delivered by the god, who gave up the sleeping Thracians to be put to death. One of the two images here, the Thebans say, is Semel, once each year, they say, they open the sanctuary on stated days. There are also ruins of the house of Lycus and the tomb of Semel, but Alcmena has no tomb. It is said that on her death she was turned from human form to a stone, but the Theban account does not agree with the Megarian. The Greek legends generally have, for the most part, different versions. Here too at Thebes are the tombs of the children of Amphion, the boys lie apart, the girls are buried by themselves. Near is the temple of Artemis of fair fame. The image was made by Scopus. They say that within the sanctuary were buried Androclea and Elias, daughters of Antiponus. For when Heracles and the Thebans were about to engage in battle with the Orchomenians, an oracle was delivered to them that success in the war would be theirs, if their citizen of the most noble descent would consent to die by his own hand. Now Antiponus, who had the most famous ancestors, was loath to die for the people, but his daughters were quite ready to do so. So they took their own lives, and are honored therefore. Before the temple of Artemis of fair fame is a lion made of stone, said to have been dedicated by Heracles after he had conquered in the battle of the Orchomenians and their king, Erginus, son of Clymenus. Near it is Apollo, surnamed Rescuer, and Hermes, called of the marketplace, another of the votive offerings of Pindar. The pyre of the children of Amphion is about half a stady from the graves. The ashes from the pyre are still there. Near this are two stone images of Athena, surnamed Girder, said to have been dedicated by Amphitryon. For here, they say, he put on his armor when he was about to give battle to Chalcodon and the Eboians. It seems that the ancients used the verb to gird oneself in the sense of to put on one's armor, 
So they say that when Homer compares Agamemnon to Ares, in respect of his girdle, he is really saying that they were alike in the fashion of their armor. The tomb shared by Zethus and Amphion is a small mound of earth. The inhabitants of Tithoria in Phocis like to steal earth from it when the sun is passing through the constellation Taurus. For if at that time they take earth from the mound and set it on Antiope's tomb, the land of Tithoria will yield a harvest, but that of Thebes will be less fertile. For this reason, the Thebans at that time keep watch over the tomb. Both these cities hold this belief, and they do so because of the oracles of Bacchus, in which are the lines. But when a man of Tithoria to Amphion and to Zethes pours on the earth peace offerings of libation and prayer, when Taurus is warmed by the might of the glorious sun, beware then of no slight disaster threatening the city, for the harvest wastes away in it when they take of the earth and bring it to the tomb of Phocis. Bacchus calls it the tomb of Phocis for the following reason. The wife of Lycus worshipped Dionysus more than any other deity. When she had suffered what the story says she suffered, Dionysus was angry with Antiope. For some reason, extravagant punishments always arouse the resentment of the gods. They say that Antiope went mad, and when out of her wits, roamed all over Greece. But Phocus, son of Orniton, son of Sisyphus, chanced to meet her, cured her madness, and then married her. So Antiope and Phocus share the same grave. The roughly quarried stones laid along the tomb of Amphion at its base are said to be the very rocks that followed the singing of Amphion. A similar story is told of Orpheus, how wild creatures followed him as he played the harp. Perdidian Gate of Thebes The road from Thebes to Calchas is by this Perdidian Gate. On the highway is pointed out the grave of Melanippus, one of the very best of the soldiers of Thebes. When the Argive invasion occurred, this Melanippus killed Tydeus, as well as Machistius, one of the brothers of Adrastus, while he himself, they say, met his death at the hands of Ampharius. Quite close to it are three unwrought stones. The Theban antiquaries assert that the man lying here is Tydeus, and that his burial was carried out by Maion. As proof of their assertion, they quote a line of the Iliad. Of Tydeus, who at Thebes is covered by a heap of earth. Adjoining are the tombs of the children of Oedipus. The ritual observed at them I have never seen, but I regard it as credible. For the Thebans say that among those called heroes to whom they offer sacrifices are the children of Oedipus. As the sacrifice is being offered, the flame, so they say, and the smoke from it divide themselves in two. I was led to believe their story by the fact that I have seen a similar wonder. It was this. In Mysia, beyond the Caucasus, is a town called Poinie, the founder of which, according to the inhabitants, was Poinus, one of the descendants of Heracles. When they are going up to sacrifice to him as a hero, smoke of itself rises up out of the grave. This occurrence, then, I have seen happening. The Thebans also show the tomb of Tiresias, about fifteen stades from the grave of the children of Oedipus. The Thebans themselves agree that Tiresias met his end in Haliartia, and admit that the monument at Thebes is a cenotaph. There is also at Thebes the grave of Hector, the son of Priam. It is near the spring called the Fountain of Oedipus, and the Thebans say that they brought Hector's bones from Troy because of the following oracle. Ye Thebans who dwell in the city of Cadmus, if you wish blameless wealth for the country in which you live, bring to your homes the bones of Hector, Priam's son, from Asia, and reverence him as a hero, according to the bidding of Zeus. The fountain of Oedipus was so named because Oedipus washed off into it the blood of his murdered father. Hard by the spring is the grave of Asphodicus. 
He it was who, in the fighting with the Argives, killed Parthepaneus, the son of Teleus. This is the Theban account, but according to the passage in the Thebiade, which tells of the death of Parthepaneus, it was Periclymenus who killed him. Tamesis On this highway is a place called Tamesis, where it is said that Europa was hidden by Zeus. There is also another legend, which tells of a fox called the Tamusian fox, who, owing to the wrath of Dionysus, the beast was reared to destroy the Thebans, and how, when about to be caught by the hound given by Artemis to Procris, the daughter of Erechtheus, the fox was turned to stone, as was likewise this hound. In Tumesis, there is also a sanctuary of Tilkinian Athena, which contains no image. As to her surname, we may hazard the conjecture that a division of the Telkinians, who once dwelt in Cyprus, came to Boeotia and established a sanctuary of Telkinian Athena. Glesis and Mount Hippastus. Seven stades from Timesis on the left are the ruins of Glesis, and before them on the right of way a small mound shaded by cultivated trees and a wood of wild ones. Here were buried Promachus, the son of Parthepaneus, and other Argive officers who joined with Agileus, the son of Adrastus, in the expedition against Thebes. That the tomb of Agileus is at Pege, I have already stated in an earlier part of my history that deals with Megara. On the straight road from Thebes to Glesis is a place surrounded by unhewn stones, called by the Thebans the Snake's Head. This snake, whatever it was, popped its head, they say, out of its hole here, and Tiresias, chancing to meet it, cut off the head with his sword. This, then, is how the place got its name. Above Glesis is a mountain called Supreme, and on it a temple and the image of Supreme Zeus. The river, a torrent, they call the Thermodon. Returning to Timesis and the road to Chalcis, you come to the tomb of Chalcodon, who was killed by Amphitryon in a fight between the Thebans and the Euboans. Harma and Mycalesis Adjoining are the ruins of the city's Harma, chariot, and Mycalesis. The former got its name, according to the people of Tenagara, because the chariot of Amphorius disappeared here, and not where the Thebans say it did. Both peoples agree that Mycalesis was so named because the cow lowed Emi Kesato here, that was guiding Cadmus and his host to Thebes. How Mycalesis was laid waste, I have related in that part of my history that deals with the Athenians. On the way to the coast of Mycalesis is a sanctuary of Mycalesian Demeter. They say that each night it is shut up and opened again by Heracles, and that Heracles is one of what are called the Idean Dactyls. Here is shown the following marvel. Before the feet of the image they place all the fruits of autumn, and these remain fresh throughout all the year. At this place, Euripus separates Euboa from Boeotia. On the right is the sanctuary of Mycalesian Demeter, and a little farther on is Aulis, said to have been named after the daughter of Agigis. Here there is a temple of Artemis with two images of white marble. One carries torches, and the other is like to one shooting an arrow. The story is that when, in obedience to the soothsaying of Calchas, the Greeks were about to sacrifice Iphigenia on the altar, the goddess substituted a deer to be the victim instead of her. They preserve in the temple what still survives of the plain tree mentioned by Homer in the Iliad. The story is that the Greeks were kept at Aulis by contrary winds, and when suddenly a favoring breeze sprang up, each sacrificed to Artemis the victim he had to hand, female and male alike. From that time, the rule was held good at Aulis that all victims are permissible. There is also shown the spring by which the plane tree grew, and on a hill nearby the bronze threshold of Agamemnon's tent. In front of the sanctuary grow palm trees, the fruit of which, though not wholly edible like the dates of Palestine, yet are riper than those of Ionia. There are but few inhabitants of Aulis, and these are potters. This land, and that about Mycalesis and Harma, 
is tilled by the people of Tanagra. <laughs>